So we've already swapped over the ASIC and the extension port on the brand new SYF game gear board. The next step is to install the cartridge connector. This is quite tricky to remove and I'm making brand new cartridge connectors soon so you won't have to do this step. However, for now, let me show you how I'm going to remove the cartridge connector. Installing it onto the new board is really easy. You simply place it in and add solder to every joint. So I'll show you the technique I use for doing this. After that, we simply need to drop in a clean screen and we have a brand new game gear ready to go. So let's just jump in and get this cartridge connector swapped over now. So here's a perfect example of a board that really wants to be replaced with the brand new boards. There's all these jumper wires repairing various parts of the circuit. So we will use the cartridge connector off this board. So let me just remove all these jumpers, we're not going to use these anymore. And we don't really care too much about this board because we're going to scrap this board anyway now. So I'm just basically gutting all of these wires to give us some room to work. The ASIC, we don't mind bridging because when we hot swap this off, which we will do, we'll notice those shorts anyway. We might as well keep this clean screen. We could possibly transplant this over to the new board. And there's the clean screen ready to be reused. So now for the part we care about, we want to get this connector off. So the very first thing to do and to not forget is to remove these rivets here. This will stop the board coming off. To do that, we'll simply snip these rivets at the top so that the connector can lift through them no problem. And that should do. So now what we need to do is remove all the solder from all of these pins. We can't hot air this part off because the plastic will melt. There's too many pins to try and warm up in one go. So the only option for this is to remove the solder and physically remove it that way. There's various tools we can do for this. So one is you can get a desolder pump, which is basically a uh, this is an automatic one, you can get a manual one as well, where you simply click in and press a button, we sell those. But this is an automatic pump where there's a soldering iron at the end, and the tip here is hollow, so you can see the tweezers go in, there's a hollow tip here to suck the solder up. So if we wanted to use this, we could simply apply a bit of flux, and every desolder pump is different, but in this case here's this desolder pump. You just place it over the hole for a second, press the button, and it removes the solder from the hole. You can see as well what always tends to happen is the pins stick to the outer edge. So even though we've desoldered, you wouldn't remove this because the pin is physically still joined to the board. You have to kind of break it off the board, which is one of the techniques you either do with the desolder pump, you kind of pull down and away, or you wiggle. But you can see if you wiggle, you'll destroy the board like this. So that's why with a desolder pump, you tend to just place it down and press. But as mentioned, sometimes it comes free completely and others it's still got solder on. Because these tools are expensive, I'm not going to use this. Instead, I'm going to show you how to do this simply using desolder wick and flux and your soldering iron. So you can get cheap solder wick, such as this, that's imitating um, other products like goot wick. Or you can get what we sell, which is genuine Japanese goot wick, which is basically the best desolder wick I've found on the market. So we sell this desolder wick. And it really does make a difference. So if we take a look at the regular desolder wick versus the goot wick, you can see how much tighter packed the goot wick is. So you can see here under the microscope, the goot wick here 
is a much finer weave than the cheaper brands. You can see these separate very easy and these are much tighter woven. They've also got flux in, so you can see all the little powdery flux. So does this, but again, look how much more dispersed the uh, flux is. So you will find a fairly big difference when using um, a good wick versus a generic wick. So let's just go ahead and show you this now using the D-Wick. So you can apply more solder to these pads, but for now, I'm going to ignore that and just use flux. So you will need flux for this, for sure, plenty of it. You can also add extra flux to the desolder wick. Now you want your iron set nice and hot, at least 400C. Ideally, you want the biggest soldering iron tip you have. So you can use a big spade tip for this. I've got the regular tip on at the minute just because I don't have one to hand. But I highly recommend, again, the biggest tip. This is all about large heat transfer fast. You're going to place the wick near the pins. And then you're going to put your iron onto the wick and then onto the pad. And you can see this hasn't really got enough heat transfer to do the job. This tip isn't good enough, so we're not really getting any flow. You'll find you can get flow on some pins, but you see the difficulty, even though these pins have come off, they're not completely desoldered. So I've just swapped the tip for a fresh tip at least. I know it's no bigger, but at least it's got a fresh tip which will help with the transfer of heat more. And let's give that a go now. You'll find once you've removed most of the solder, it's harder to remove the remaining solder. So counterintuitively, you'd normally apply more solder uh, to remove them. But let's just have a go with this first. And you can see that's now already working better. Let's just go back and clean up these other pins. And it's important to wait long enough for the heat to transfer. As you consume the wick and it fills up with solder, you'll see it go from a copper to a silver. Then you want to move down. Once the end of the wick is long enough, then you will want to trim the excess off. If you don't trim this excess off, then all the heat transfer is wasted because the tip doesn't get as hot because it's warming up all the rest of the wick. So let me try to show you what's happening on one of these pads nice and close. So you can see we've got flux on this pad. And what you will see if I get a really fresh piece here, if you put your iron on, you can see the wick drawing up all of the solder into its weaves. You can also see this is struggling, and this is mainly because this tip is simply not big enough. With the right size tip and enough heat transfer, this works fine. So what I'm going to do for now is crank my iron temperature up to try and compensate. So I've gone to 480. What you can also do is apply some leaded solder so that it melts at a lower temperature. So if we apply some leaded solder now, and let's try that one again with a hotter iron. So I've upped the iron temperature to 450, applied leaded solder, and now let's give this a go. And see how much quicker you see that solder wick up. That's now showing this is working. So what we can do if we struggle, and if this is the only tip you have, for example, is we can apply some leaded solder to the pins. Leaded solder melts quicker than lead free solder. So if we just add a little bit of leaded solder to all these pins, it will help with this process. This process really is all about simply having enough heat to force the solder to run up the wick. So if we now go on this one, see how fast that solder is going up that wick. Much faster than before. 
that's how you know you've now got the right technique and the right temperature. If the solder just doesn't seem to flow up the wick, then you either don't have enough flux, don't have enough heat, or maybe the wick is full because you have to trim it regular. So we just continue this down the row. And you want to keep seeing that nice flow of solder going up the wick. The other important thing you want to do is once you start removing the solder from one of the pins, don't be tempted to pull away too soon and look to see if it's gone. If you do that and there's solder remaining, then what will happen is you won't be able to get the wick to get rid of the remaining solder. If that happens, you simply reapply some more solder back to the pad so that heat can transfer from the new solder and leave the wick in place long enough. Again, if you're not seeing this happening, as you saw at the start, if you're not seeing the solder go straight up the wick, make sure you're using high quality wick, double check your temperatures, don't just sit there with the iron on the pin forever. If it's not working right, stop to figure out why. You'll never clear the holes of solder if you don't have all these things correct. High temperature, quality wick, flux, and ideally a large iron tip. We can see then also that when these pins are stuck like this and don't want to come out, the best technique is a tweezer on the back, iron on the front, and it clicks free. Once it clicks free and you can move it, then you know it's going to come out. If like this pin here, there's actually still solder in the hole, then this one, for example, is where we need to fill it with a bit more solder. Go back in with the wick and just remove that excess solder. And again, if it's stuck to the edge, just warm up and try and free it up. So once you've done all the desolder wick, go down the pins, double check if they're free or not, and if they're not free, then just warm them up a little bit more to hopefully free them from the edge. Pins like this where they're folded over, We can just gently bend up straight. We're not worried about this damaged veer on here because we're not reusing this board. And that really all there is to it. You just have to go down, take your time, and remove the solder from each hole. Make sure they're all loose. And once you've done this, the connector will basically just fall free. I'm just going to do that for the remaining pins, and then this connector should come out. You can also see, similar to drag soldering, once you're used to this, you can kind of drag the wick in the same way. The same kind of things apply. Plenty of flux, plenty of heat, and keep trimming that desolder wick. And I wouldn't recommend this technique when you're first starting because it's much easier to uh, damage pins or just blindly dragging down with your desolder wick without knowing if your temperatures are right and other things are right. So first get used to just doing this one pin at a time. And then once you're comfortable, you can just do the kind of drag the wick in for a much faster process. Clean the soldering iron tip regular as well. If you see any blackening like I just did, just get rid of that contamination. So you can see once all the pins are seemingly loose, we can now try and remove this connector. So we have those rivets cut and this should hopefully now just pull out and if it doesn't want to pull out you can see it's starting to pull out now 
we can just remove this rivet fully so it's not in the way and we know now we're just dealing with these connectors coming out so you can see where they come out and there we go it's popped out the board and it was really just the flux holding that in so all the kind of dirty flux on the board was holding it together so this board now we will take off the ASIC and keep that chip everything else really can be scrapped then so just before we reinstall this into um, the console we just want to straighten up the pins you can see the kind of just coming out of the groove a little bit you just want to make sure you don't have any excess solder on the edges of the pins so let's just clean up anywhere we see any sort of excess solder because this will stop these pins sliding into the new board if there's too much solder on them there shouldn't really be much because we just did the desolder wick but it's just worth a quick visual inspection so now for the fun part is to simply place this into the connector slots so make sure you say line up pin 45 just push down gently and then just using your finger you can just coax the pins into place Once they all line up, it should start going through the board. And we can see there we are all the way in. So while this is in position and kind of held in, keeping the pressure on, I just want to tack this in place. So I'm just going to grab some solder, get some on the tip of my iron, and just quickly blob it over. A few pins there, keeping the pressure down so the connector stays all the way flush. We'll then blob another pin here. And it's awkward with two hands while you're holding this because you can't really apply solder flux at the same time. But that should have hopefully secured the connector into the board, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and just slide these rivets back in. And you can see there's a solder tap here, so we could in theory solder these rivets in place. If they're a bit misshapen from cutting them, just use your pliers to get them back into shape. And once they find the hole, they should push through nicely. We don't really need this end for now. It's not going anywhere there, it stops it rotating. Nothing's going to pull these out naturally. So they will be perfectly fine without the top piece. They're quite difficult to click in, but once they're in, we've still got movement there, you see. But it does add some extra support. I would probably say we want to replace these with some panhead screws, maybe, and a bolt at the top. So that's something for future thought. For now, let's just flux up all these pins. And let's just whiz down them and solder them one at a time. To get a good solder, you want to put the iron on one side of the pin and feed the solder in from the other side. If the iron isn't hot enough, then you won't get this well shape when you solder. It would simply say, do that, where it sticks to the pin and not flows to the pad. So if you see it where you don't get a nice flow onto the pin and the pad, double check your temperature, double check you're working with some fresh flux and you shouldn't have any problems. Just this side to go now and we have a new connector on this board. Once you're used to doing these as well, here's another little technique again, similar to the drag technique, you can kind of do a drag solder and if you get your speed just right then you can solder many pins much faster. Now the connector's on, we want a nice clean up of the board. We don't want to leave all this flux on the board, making a really clean white board look messy. 
And there we have a cleaned up and installed cartridge connector. Let's clean this side as well. And if you wanted to get these really clean, you could always drop these into an ultrasonic cleaner. That will get all of the flux off, all of the dirt off, and give it a really nice clean finish. So there we have the ASIC and the cartridge connector now in place. They are the two hardest things. And all that's left now is to chuck an LED on, chuck a screen on, and chuck the two connectors on, and we're good to go. Just take your time removing the cartridge connector. I'd say of all the tasks, this is the hardest one. Not to install, but certainly to remove. Remember to cut the rivets, apply plenty of flux, use good quality desolder wick, the largest iron tip you have at the hottest temperature your iron can go to, and maybe practice on a few boards that you don't mind destroying in the first place. So next up, we'll chuck on a screen, the connectors and an LED. I'll either use my clean screen or maybe my new prototype clean screen, which is also white, that'll go nice with this board, depending on how I feel. That's it for this one, and I'll catch you in the next.